Today we're gonna to talk about carbine essentials. You're going out to buy a carbine, you're looking for accessories, three main things you wanna keep on. America! Mostly we're gonna talk about the considerations when building out a fighting carbine, something that you're gonna to use to defend yourself or uh, whatever case you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just play around with it because it's fun. Right, absolutely. Sporting rifle, defensive rifle, regardless, uh, we go into carbines. Remember, we think about carbines, uh, at least my own personal ones, I know him as well. There's three main things that you're looking to have on them. So we're gonna go over what the three big things are. You're buying your first one, what kind of accessories should you get with them? Uh, there, I think that there's three main ones that you should go for. When, uh, when kitting it out, uh, the biggest one for me is always gonna be the optic. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we kind of have different opinions on optics, but there's a lot of stuff out there. He likes to run something kind of like a, a holographic or a red dot. Uh, I like to, pr I prefer to run something with a little magnification. Just gives me a little different option. Having, having good optics is extremely important. That's good optics, not only, you know, with good reticles and good features on the inside of there, but something that comes with a good mount. So, I mean, if you buy up to a certain standard, uh, you, you get a good quality product, something that's gonna hold at zero at the very least is extremely important. If you think about what you're gonna be using it for, it's gonna get banged around, it's gonna get beat up. It's gotta be reliable. The last thing you want is to pick your gun up and look through the optic and have nothing there. Or go to the range and lose your zero, and then you get a re-zero every time you go out. It's, that's no good. Or uh, chase zero. Or that chase sucks. zero. Yeah. Second of which, uh, as a flashlight, you want to see what you're shooting at, right? If you're uncertain uh, in a low lit environment, if it's nighttime, whatever, uh, positive ID is extremely important. And I put flashlights on all the guns that I'm serious about. Yeah, most of us aren't running around all of the time with night vision just strapped to our heads. Uh, you know, a, a, a good quality flashlight that again is gonna be durable, that's gonna have a good throw to it. You're gonna get a good, a good view of a room or uh, you know, the exterior of a building or just outside in the woods, whatever. Uh, that's always going to come in handy. There's a lot, a lot of flashlights out there, so you can pretty much hit your budget whenever you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, just keep in mind that you're going to want it to stay on your gun, so make sure it's got a solid mount. And then you can get accessories for them, right? Like you can get like, you know, pressure pads to actuate them and stuff, kick them on. Um, makes it a little bit easier than having to lean over and hit the tail cap. Number three? Number three is going to be a good, sturdy sling. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Most of the time, you're not going to be actually holding your gun up pointed at something. Uh, and a lot of times when you're carrying a rifle, you still need to use your hands. So a sling comes in handy to just keep it on your body. You don't have to set it down. It's still right there where you need it, uh, but it doesn't have to be in both your hands at all times. It also is good uh, for dudes like me that do run uh, a little bit more magnification. If you tighten it up real well, you can, you can pull your gun into your shoulder and use your sling to kind of anchor it in so you get a, a better sight picture. Mm -hmm. Get it nice and tight. Something to look for with a sling, we both run the Blue Force Gear slings. Uh, one thing that I really like, and there's a lot of different companies that do it, but something on the sling where you can make adjustments with one hand while, a, while the rifle's on body, I think that's really important. You just grab that little tab and move it back and forth, tighten and loosen. Yeah, it you... makes it really easy yeah. to go from tight to loose whenever mm -hmm. you need to move things around. I also really appreciate, uh, you know, New age QD clips. QD clips, yeah, um, there's a lot of different mounting and stuff. You can mount it straight to your stock normally, but you know, if you need to get it off quickly or you want to go in and out of a case or anything else, QD is awesome. QD is awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, those are the big three. At least those are the three that I would start with. I think that that's the, the bare minimum for accessories. Going out from there, I usually do my triggers. Um, I change the trigger out, maybe uh, muzzle devices, or you do like vertical, you know, four grips or. I change all my charging hand handles. Stops. Charging handles, yeah, yeah. it's a Ambi's big one. Ambi's great. Also, a little bit larger is great. The the standard GI one can be a little small. You got to cram your hand in there right on the gun. Not that they're not usable, but that's just one of the first things I jump to. Right, right. Grips, and I mean, like they're like Legos for adults. You change out all sorts of different stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, at the very least, uh, optics, a good flashlight, and a sling. That's that's what I'd be going with. For sure. That's carbines. That was Carbine Essentials. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit or got to at least laugh at us. We did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, join us next time. Always like, subscribe, follow. Yep. Hit us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Mr. Guns Official.